Hello and welcome to another episode of STEM with Mr M, where every week I'll be performing different demonstrations and explaining the science behind what we're seeing. This week I've teamed up with Connected Baby as part of the promotion for their new children's book, The Little Iceberg. So this week we'll be exploring glaciers and icebergs. Let's check it out. <laughs> My partners for this week, Connected Baby, were born from the vision of Dr Suzanne Zedeik. She believes that everybody deserves to share in the discoveries that scientists are making about the importance of relationships. Connected Baby bring that science to life. Their new children's book, The Little Iceberg, tells a story about an iceberg with a secret. She's not just cold and lonely, she's also frightened. But a little bird singing songs of compassion helps this iceberg go on a journey of discovery to find her place in the world. This metaphoric story about a child that no longer has to cope with loss and trauma on their own is brilliantly written by author Nikki Murray and beautifully brought to life through the artwork of Sylvia Lynch. The book has a virtual launch on Saturday the 20th of June and I've left links in the description to the Connected Baby website, to author Nikki Murray artist Sylvia Lynch and also a link to where you can sign up to be part of the virtual book launch. There's a challenge later in this episode for a chance to be included in a celebration video and to win a copy of the book. And now to our demonstrations this week on glaciers and icebergs. Glaciers start forming in places where more snow piles up than melts each year. Shortly after landing, the snow turns from light fluffy snow into hard ice pellets. More snow falls and buries these ice pellets and over time these build up into glaciers. About 10% of the world's land mass is covered by glacial ice and this includes the ice sheets in Greenland and in Antarctica. The first demonstration this week is going to look at what happens to glaciers as they melt and how this affects the land round about them. To set up my glacier, I half filled a plastic tub with water and put it in the freezer. Once it was frozen, I took it out and added some sand and some rocks on top and then poured more water in, put it back in the freezer and waited until that was frozen. The sand and the rocks represent the land that is underneath the snow that originally falls and then the rest of the ice is a representation of all the snow that's piled up over time. And now that my glacier is ready, I'm able to set up my demonstration. I've covered the top of a chopping board with flour. This is to represent the land round about the glacier. I've placed my glacier at the top and we're going to see what happens to a glacier over time and how it affects the landscape round about it. As the glacier melts, it increases water flow and streams and rivulets start to run out from the glacier. You can see this in my example, that these are running out from underneath my makeshift glacier. Also, as the glacier moves down the hill, it pushes up the land in front of it. And this is called moraines, which are mounds of land that have got pushed together by the glacier. As the glacier moves down the hill, it is also leaving behind deposits of land that were caught up under the ice. In this case, my glacier is leaving behind sand and rocks. Glaciers move very slowly, so I had to speed up the footage of mine and jump ahead to parts so that you could see the process of the glacier moving without having to watch a video which was hours long. Icebergs form when chunks of glaciers break off and are floating freely in open water. This breaking off is called calving. To demonstrate a couple of things to do with icebergs, I've got a cup here to represent my open water and I have a blue ice cube which is going to be my iceberg. I've marked the water level on the cup here in blue marker. So I'm going to add my iceberg to the water. You will notice that adding the iceberg to the water has raised the water level. But you will also notice that most of the iceberg is sitting underneath the surface of the water. In fact, 90% of an iceberg is located beneath the surface. Antarctica contains 90% of the world's glacier ice. 
There's also frozen sea ice in Antarctica and the Arctic is made up of frozen sea ice. The next demonstration is an experiment to see what melts faster, ice which is in water or ice which is not in water. To demonstrate this, I'm going to put one ice cube in a dish which contains some water and I'm going to put the other ice cube in a dry dish and we'll see which one melts first. You will notice that the ice cube in the dish with water melts faster than the ice cube in the dry dish. This is because the molecules which make up water are more tightly packed and as they move around the ice they are transferring heat to it. The molecules which make up air are less tightly packed so as they move around the one in the dry dish they transfer less heat to the ice cube. This means that sea ice melts faster than land ice. If you want to know more about the transfer of movement energy into heat energy, check out last week's video on the conservation of energy. You might hear in the news about climate change and how it's affecting the melting of the ice on Earth. And you might be wondering, why is it such a bad thing? Well, for a start, it's devastating for the animals that live on the frozen ground that are losing their habitat and consequently losing their lives. But also, we learned two weeks ago when we did solar ovens that dark materials absorb heat and light materials reflect heat. The ice on Earth reflects sunlight back out into space and therefore reflects heat away from the Earth. The less ice that we have, the more heat the Earth is going to absorb. Our next demonstration clearly shows this. We've got two ice cubes here, one of them sitting on a piece of black paper and the other one sitting on a piece of white paper and both of them are in direct sunlight. And as you watch, you will notice that the ice cube on the black paper is melting faster than the ice cube on the white paper. This is because the black paper is absorbing more of the heat. Now, as sea ice melts on Earth, there is then more dark water round about the ice, which is going to absorb more heat, and that's going to make even more ice melt. And this is just going to result in less heat being reflected back out into space, more heat being absorbed by the Earth, and the Earth heating up as climate change takes hold. As well as the overall heat of the Earth, another thing that melting ice can affect is sea levels, and this experiment is going to demonstrate that. I've got a cup here with just water in it, and I've got another cup here with a jar in it to represent some land. I'm going to add two ice cubes into the water, and I'm going to mark where the sea level is in this cup. In the other one, we already know where our sea level is, so I can mark that one. And I'm going to add two ice cubes onto our piece of land. And we're going to see which one affects sea levels more, melting sea ice or melting land ice. We noticed earlier when we added our iceberg into our water, that when ice is added to water, it raises the level. In this experiment, we've seen that melting sea ice does not raise the level of the water because it's already floating in the water. However, melting land ice does raise the water level. This is important because as land ice melts around the world, it is going to raise sea levels and increase flooding. There is enough glacier ice in Antarctica to raise the sea level by over 60 metres. That is over 180 feet if it all melts. Now it is time for your challenge. In the little iceberg, it's important for the cold, hard exterior of the iceberg to melt. However, we've just explored how melting ice is bad for the planet. Your challenge is to test different materials you have at home and see which ones slow down ice melting the most. Take some ice cubes, wrap them in different materials and make sure you can still see the ice cube so you can see how quickly they're melting. Take pictures and take video of you performing this challenge and email them to connectedbaby at hello at connectedbaby.net by 9pm this Friday the 19th of June for a chance to be included in the celebration video for the book and also to be entered into a prize draw for a chance to win The Little Iceberg. The winner of the prize draw will be announced on Saturday the 20th of June live during the virtual book launch. Make sure and let Connected Baby know whether it's okay for them to use your name and age, and good luck with your challenge. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
if you have like and subscribe and share the video with your friends. Don't forget to check out the links in the description where you can sign up to be part of the virtual book launch for Connected Baby's new children's book, The Little Iceberg. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers for your questions. And look out for a questions video coming soon. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring glaciers and icebergs.